Um, there we go. Not too long. Because if we go too long, I know what happens. We forget what we're, we've heard. We forget the first point. And one thing that the Holy Spirit has really uh, convicted me of through this last series of uh, messages that Chris has been given from Ephesians, it was, Lord, what can I take home? What am I taking home from the message? Besides saying, boy, that was a good message, right? We look at it, we don't even, we follow along in the Word of God, and then when we get in the car, we're going to say, where are we going to eat? Let's get home before the game starts. I wonder what they're doing. I wonder what's happening here. Oh, listen to this news. But what did we get from the Word of God that was so filled with the Holy Spirit? And He gave us the Word of God. Wish I had time, we'd go around the room this morning and I'd ask each of you, what did you get from last week's message? Did you write it down? Did you memorize it? Did you take a scripture? Did you take it home with you? And so at the beginning of, of that series, I, I asked the Lord every time I came to church, Lord, give me one thing that I can think about during the week from Chris's sermon because I know it's the Holy Spirit working in him and giving this message to us. Jesus wants to give us this message of his love, his faithfulness, and then he gives us his word to back it up. Let me get a drink here. refreshing water that we all need of the Word of God. So as I prepared this message, I thought, you know, what we really, what I want to challenge you to do today is not only to take from this message, but prepare your heart to take from the Word of God every week something from the Word. Last week, the one sentence I got was this. We are not on a playground. We are in a battlefield. We are not on a playground. We are in the battlefield. And every day when I woke up, I thought, that is the message. We're not on a playground, which the devil continually tries to get us to believe we are. He wants us to play with the world, play along with their songs, play along in their visions, play along in their dreams. But we have a different vision. We have a different dream. And it's the kingdom of God. It's what am I letting Jesus do in my life that I may influence all those people around me, that I may let them see his goodness, his mercy, his joy, his peace in our lives. So I have a hymn. I just want to read the verses to you. And you can look this up on your phone. Maybe you can take, uh, write this song down and then pull it up on YouTube or somewhere and get it. It's an old hymn. It goes, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. Ever heard that? <laughs> Here's how it goes. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus, since I found in him a friend so strong and true. I would tell you how he changed my life completely. He has done something that no other one could do. And it's not other one, it's other friend can do. <laughs> No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cares for me. Oh, how much he cares for you. 
And the best way we can get this song into our heart is not only to sing it, but it's to open up his word and to see what his word has to say. The next line of this song is, all my life was filled with sin when Jesus found me. All my heart was filled with misery and woe. Jesus placed his strong and loving arms around me, and he led me in the way that I ought to go. No one ever cares for me like Jesus. The last phrase is, every day he comes to me with new assurance. More and more I understand his word of love. But I never knew just how he came to save me till someday I'll see his blessed face of love. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. He's the closest friend you'll ever have. So let's go to the Word of God today. Um, I want you to find in him that strength. And then take one of these verses home uh, with you. So I'm going to wait on you as I give you the scripture to find it, either on your phone or if you have a Bible, to turn to it so that you can say, this is the word of God. You see, it's by that very word that we read in the book of Genesis that he says, let there be light and there was light. <laughs> wow. And from our vantage point in this time, we're seeing more of that light that goes out through all of the universe and beyond as far as we have been able to find. We have not been able to measure or get to the end of that yet. And so that's how great his word is. The voice of the Lord is. He speaks and we hear what he says. So if you'll turn with me to Hebrews chapter 4. I know I'll get there before you because I've practiced a little ahead of time. Hebrews chapter 4. I'll wait until I see the pages stop and... Uh, you know, the Word of God is powerful, sharper than a double-edged sword. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 says, this is what the Word of God is. For the Word of God is living today, this very minute, as you hear it. That last song we sang, wow, that was glorious. He's my strength. He's our everything. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than a double-edged sword, than a scalpel. He pierces even to the dividing of soul and spirit, joint and marrow. He judges the, oh, got it, thoughts. He judges the thoughts and attitudes of our heart. He judges our minds, our hearts, what are we thinking on? What are we dwelling on? What can you take home today that when you get in the car you'll talk about? Besides his beard's kind of long and scraggly. <laughs> he should shave like he does his head. <laughs> what are you going to take home with you? going to take the word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword. It cuts you to pieces. You say, I don't like something that cuts me and hurts me. Well, if you've ever had cancer or you've ever had an appendix or you've ever had to have an operation, then you know that it's pretty good to get cut on when you're sick. You need it. And you say, yes, I need it. In fact, you have to sign a paper saying, yes, you can cut me. Because you need it. It's the only thing that's going to keep me going. And in these days, this word that you have before you is living and active. It is that living word, active today. 
And it's the thing that's going to keep us going through these hard times. These are hard times, aren't they? They are. I keep trying to to find something that would help me. Well, I finally did. We're going to get there in a minute in uh, the book of Romans. But then chapter, just look over to uh, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7. Today, if you hear his voice, the Holy Spirit is saying this. He's going to say, today, today, today. Verse 7, he says, today, if you hear his voice, then verse 8, do not harden your heart as you did in the rebellion during a time of testing in the pandemic. Don't turn away your heart. The world keeps telling us, the world, the flesh, and the devil tries to keep you away from this word and get you someplace else. This word is the only place where you get the operation of God in your heart. And look down to verse... Um, verse 12. See to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that it turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily as long as it is called today. That's why we're gathered together, to encourage one another. Sometimes we've had to do that over uh, the um, tell over our computers, over our phones, where we use FaceTime, but we're trying to encourage one another in the Lord to stay into this word that we may know him. And the next verse is the same thing, verse 15. As it has just been said, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as you did In the pandemic, as you did in the rebellion. We're living in a world that is full of rebellion. Against what? Against God. We're in a a rebellion against God. You say, well, not me. Yeah. (laughs) Just as I think I'm, I'm really, I can say to the Lord, Lord, look at me. The Lord says, really? You got mad at that referee that called that guy a a fair catch when he was out of bounds. Just ask my wife. She'll tell you. I jump off the couch. I go, what? And even the announcers say, what? But they look at it and they study it. And then they come back and say, fair catch. You go, really? Really? (laughs) <laughs> and then the Lord says, there you are, Brian. You're, you're, it's a game that doesn't even make a bit of difference, but you're upset about it. I go, oh, okay, Lord. I, I got it. I got it. Back to the Word. And the Word tells me I need him every hour. But no one ever cares for me like Jesus If you'll flip over to Hebrews chapter 11, that you know where I'm going next. Of course, here, here is how we get to show it. Verse 6. And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. He rewards you as you seek him. He rewards you as you come and you say, Lord Jesus, what would you have me be? What would you have me do? Now I'm going to take you to the Old Testament, to a a passage probably haven't heard for a while, or maybe you have. You know the books of Isaiah, Jeremiah, and then we have Lamentations. So if you'll turn to Lamentation, chapter 3. Verse 
Excuse me if I'm making you thirsty, but. <laughs> Lamentation, chapter 3, beginning at verse 55. And this is what we should do when we get anxious. When we've watched the news and we know we shouldn't have, but we did. When we know we read that article that would upset us, but we read it anyway. And now where are we going to go? Are we going to panic or are we going to go here to this prayer from Lamentation? And hear what he says, beginning at verse 55. I call, to you, I call on your name, O Lord, from the depth of the pit. You heard my plea. Do not close your ears to me, to my cry for relief. You come near when I called you, and you said, Do not fear. Do not fear. In verse 58, O oh Lord, you take up my case. You redeemed my life. Lord, you took up my case. You redeemed my life. One of the version I read said, you are my lawyer, O Lord. Plead my case. I have called you to be my lawyer. Now plead my case, O Lord, for you have redeemed my life. That is where the Lord would have us be. So what's going to help us to get to that place where we let the Word of God in our life? Well, from uh, Romans chapter 8, and I know you're going to say, oh, I know where he's going now. He's going to that verse that I don't really like to hear all the time. I'm hearing so much in these days, this verse, Romans 8, 28, right? For all things work together for good, to those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that verse. And they keep trying to say, well, you know, this is what, this is the purpose of the Lord, so you don't have to fear, you, you know, the Lord's in charge. Yes, he is. And I know he is. But where do I get that strength to trust him? Well, Hebrews 11, 6, said, by faith we trust him. By faith. Well, where do I get this faith to be able to say, Romans 8, 28 applies to me, that he has called me according to his purpose. Well, I want to give you another verse in Romans 8. We have Romans 8, 28. Now look at Romans 8, 38. This is what I want you to be convinced of today. So that you can say, I am convinced, the King James says, I am persuaded by what's going on in my life, what has gone on in my life, what it looks like ahead. But this is where I have been, this is the verse I've been quoting for the last um, three weeks, before the election and after and whatever's going on now. This is the verse that I quote. This is the verse that I've want to put in my heart to remember. Here it is. For I am convinced, I am persuaded. Now listen to this first word, that neither death. For some reason, when I memorized that, I memorized the opposite. Neither life nor death. But it says, neither death nor life, right? Is that what it says? Death is first. Death is the last enemy. Death is the thing that makes us afraid of the scary movie. Death is the thing that we come upon and we say, oh, oh man, that's, that's death. We've got to run away from that. Yes, we do. But listen to this. I am convinced that neither death nor life Neither angels nor demons, neither the present, <laughs> what's going on in your life this very minute today, 
whatever you're looking forward when, or not looking forward to, when you step out of here today, what circumstance you're going to have to go back into this afternoon or tomorrow, today or the future, present or future, Neither powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. From the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So no matter what you're facing, no matter what is looking you in the face and saying, you can't take this. You say, yes, I can, because the love of Jesus is with me. Take that with you today. The love of Jesus. The love of Jesus. Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. Man, we're weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Is that your song? Yes, Jesus loves me. The world, the flesh, the devil is going to try to keep you away from the fact that, yes, Jesus loves you. It's one of his favorite uh, accusations. You're not good enough. You'll never be good enough. To which I say, amen. Amen. That's why Jesus did what he did. That's why God wrote the law. He wrote the law so that none of us would be good enough to come to God and say, look at me, God, I've done everything right. He said, no, you haven't. And he can point it out. <laughs> and I have to say, yes, Lord, I did get mad when that referee said, fair catch. And he was out of bounds. And we lost the game because of it. Why am I mad about that? So we back up into verse, um, still in Romans chapter 8. Back up to verse um, 34. Who is it that condemns? It is Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life. Is that, and is at the right hand of God, and is also interceding for us. You have the Savior that was hung on a cross, that bled and died, but then he rose again. One of the, the that song we were thinking, I was thinking, one of the lines could have been in there. He is risen. And I know he is, he's my life. He's got me because he's risen. And so it says here, um, he's at the right hand of God interceding for us. Who, verse 35, who or what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Now here we go, another list. Shall trouble... Why did he write all these things? Because they were in the middle of it. <laughs> they, they were right in the middle of this trouble. Just as we are. With accusations, the accuser of the brethren. But we have Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father who is not accusing us, but who is loving us. Uh, shall trouble, hardships, Persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword. For it is written, for your sake we are killed all the day long, counted as sheep to the slaughter. No. Verse 37. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. More than conquerors through him who loved us. Is that your song, Jesus loves me? More than a conqueror. To him who loved us. Then you can say, beginning at verse 38, I am convinced that neither death nor life, 
nor anything else. What I'm facing this afternoon or next Monday, or will I get laid off, or will my job continue, or will I continue to receive my check? I don't know, but it's not going to separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Then turn to me to my favorite text for today, which is from Mark chapter 4. Jesus has just got through talking, telling the story of the uh, sower that sowed the word, and he went into it. Then, when his by, with he was, then he was alone with his disciples. They said, "Well, what does this mean?" And Jesus said, "Are you so slow that you do not, don't understand?" And in verse uh, thirteen, don't you understand this parable? How would you yet understand any parable? The farmer sold the word. What did we just read about the word at the beginning? The word is sharper. It's, the, it's what's uh, going to cut you up. It's going to put you back together and heal you. So he said, the sower sold the word. Then he goes and he tells all the people this. He's been preaching all day long. And he gets down to verse 35. They were done preaching and the disciples came to him. And he said to them, let us go to, Jesus said, let us go to the other side. The test is going to be for the disciples. <laughs> Let's go to the other side. We've been ministering all day and we're tired. The next verse uh, 36, leaving the crowd behind, they took him along with them to the boat. We see this one verse stump me as I, I prayed about I said, Lord, what is this verse? And I see Jesus worn out because he was just like us. He'd had a hard day. He'd had a hard day. Uh, time pre he had a good time preaching, but then people still weren't understanding, but the, he said, let's go to the other side. Let's, let's leave. And so I see two disciples on both of the si uh, under his arms carrying him to the boat or helping him into the boat. He gets in the boat, goes right back to the back of the boat and lays down and goes sound asleep. Have you ever been that tired? As you just, I mean, you just conked out. I, I know what that is like to be up and then to have a four-hour sleep and then get up and do another day and then another four-hour sleep. And then there finally comes that day when you don't realize how you got into bed and you sleep for 10 hours or more. So Jesus is in the back of the boat, sound asleep on a pillow, and guess what happens? A storm comes up, a fierce storm comes up, and it rocks the boat, and the boat is being swamped, but Jesus is still asleep in the back of the boat. So his disciples come like we do in the middle of the storm, and we come to Jesus, and we say, why are you letting this happen? Right? Why are you letting this happen in our country? Jesus woke up, spiced a little water on his face, and he rebuked the wind. He said, quiet, shut up, be still. And it was. It was still. He said, be quiet, be muzzled. And then the storm quit, died down, stopped. Just think, that's the word of Jesus speaking to what we would consider uh, air? Talk to the hand? You know, just out in space, it doesn't make any difference. But Jesus spoke, and the hurricane stopped. The water went glass. And then he looked at his disciples and he said, why are you afraid? 
Do you still have no faith? You still haven't opened that word that I gave you? Now, I have to put us in a different position. Excuse me while I sit and see what I got here. Uh, because we have more than the disciples ever thought of having. You say, wait a minute. Well, they had Jesus with them. Yeah, but wait a minute. They weren't trusting Jesus until the Holy Spirit came into their lives, and then they began to write this book for us. Not a one of those men had the Old Testament. They could go to the synagogue. They could perhaps copy it and read it, but they didn't have it like we have it. You and I have it before us day and night. We have the opportunity to pick up this and say, I would like this translation. And then we can go to one of the other hubs and it'll tell us, excuse me, it'll tell us what those verses mean. And if you don't like that one, you can go to another site and it'll tell you what it, the same verse means from a different point of view. So we have the Word of God in abundance. Are we taking advantage of it? When Chris preaches this coming Tuesday, when we're at a meal with no pie, but we're giving thanksgiving, we're, we're, we're thanking God for all these blessings. Think of this, that Jesus Christ has given us his Word that he is the living word that we have, and he comes and he lives in us. Now, how many of you have been memorizing scripture? Anybody? A few? Yeah, I've been memorizing scripture. Uh, well, let me give you a scripture that you can memorize, and I'm, I'm going to expect you, in fact, I might walk up next week and say, hey, did you memorize any scripture? And you'll say, yeah. Uh, I, I, my mind is just not uh, sharp enough to get those scriptures down. Well, I want to give you just a few um, from First Thessalonians. Chapter five. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5. Oh, wait a minute while you get there. I'm going to give you some really hard verses to memorize. The first verse I ever memorized, I remember them saying, this is the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. I said, hey, yeah, I got that one. <laughs> But here's some verses you can memorize. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And if you, if you want to memorize these, these are good too, beginning at verse 14. You can uh, memorize these verses, 14 and 15. And we urge you, brothers, warn them who are idle, encourage the timid. Now, the warning, maybe you don't, unless you really know them really well. But you can encourage the timid, uh, timid, help the weak, be patient with everybody. Be patient with everybody. <laughs> That's a hard one. <laughs> Even from me watching TV, it's patient. I couldn't take it with that referee. I wasn't patient. Be patient with everybody. Verse 15, make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always try to be kind to everyone and to each other. Okay, that's a little long one, but we can do that. But here's the one you should be able to memorize. Verse 16, rejoice always. 1 Thessalonians 5.16, rejoice always. That's pretty simple. Rejoice always. So when you're listening to the radio and they're saying something you don't like, say, I got a verse. 
1 Thessalonians 5, 16. Rejoice always. Or if you don't like that one, pray 17. Pray continually. You know, as I, as I was reading this, I know there are commentators that say, well, you know, these people weren't too uh, bright when they put all these short verses in there one at a time. And I'm saying, wait a minute, this was the Holy Spirit that inspired these guys. For me, it, this is the verses I need. I need these short verses. Pray continually. Verse 18. In everything give thanks For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I memorized this verse a long time ago. (laughs) Because in everything give thanks. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God. It isn't just a suggestion. You want to know the will of God? Give thanks in everything. For this is the will of God in Concerning you, but where? Not in in your circumstance, but in Christ Jesus. Oh, do you know him? Are you in him? Is he your life in Christ Jesus? Verse 19. Do not pay back or do not put out the Spirit's fire. Don't quench the Spirit. When the Lord's moving in your life, when the Word is working with you, don't put it out. Don't harden your heart. Don't say, well, I don't really want to do that, Lord. He says, wait a minute. Don't quench that spirit. Don't put it out. Then the next verse, do not despise prophesying. When the prophet, when the Word of God is prophetic, when the Word of God is active and sharp, Don't just quench it out. But see, verse 21 then goes along with that. Test everything. Hold on to what is good. Verse 22. Avoid every kind of evil. And then you can skip uh, on down to, to, uh, uh, let's see, 23. If, um, If that one is too long, go to 24. (laughs) the one who called you is faithful. Jesus has called me and he is faithful. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend as kind as he. No one else knows me like he does. And he's wanting to do for you what he did for the early church, what he's done for anyone who you know, whom God has blessed. Anyone who you know, it looks like they're a superhero. You know, that's, that's the one thing about Jesus. When I saw him get in the boat and he was tired, the disciples realized he's just like us. He's just a man. He's got really good words. But then after he woke up and said, be quiet, and it was, the next verse says that they were greatly perplexed, filled with fear and awe because the word spoke and things happened. Do you want things to happen? This is the word. Look to Jesus. Take this word and say, Lord, what can I take today from this word? Rejoice evermore. Or pray without ceasing. Or in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, (laughs) Oh, we love you, and we love your word. We love you that you have made a way for us to come, to stand before you forgiven, transformed, made new because of your blood and because of the resurrection 
Thank you, Lord God. We love you. We praise you. I pray a blessing on each one that's here today. I pray for all those that are home. Pray that the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep and guard your hearts and your minds in and through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Go in peace.